Hello, welcome to Tofu Land. My name is Kirsten, and today we are going to talk about traps in the tofu listening section. This is part three. We are going to focus on the detail question. And if you haven't yet watched parts one and two, I would highly recommend going back and watching those first before diving in to this video. So just to refresh, um, we do have this conversation here between a man and a woman. The man is a student, he comes in to see the professor and he apologizes for being late. Um, she's a little bit upset about this um, because there is important information at the beginning of class that he should be aware of, um, but he assures her, her that he has a friend that takes uh, notes for him. Um, and then he says, what I really want to discuss with you is graduate school. I've just um, decided that I want to apply to graduate school. She's really excited for him. Congratulations. Um, and he, she's happy for him. And what he really wants to ask her is, would you write me a letter of recommendation? So that's his purpose for going to see the professor is asking her if she would write this letter of recommendations. Um, she says yes, that she will write the letter of recommendation, but there are certain things that she needs um, so that she can write the best letter she can. And he should bring her a resume so that she can look at the resume and ask him more questions in depth about his goals, etc. And that he should come to her office tomorrow so that she can ask him these questions. And he should also bring with him his transcripts and any awards that he has won, like a list of awards. So that's the summary of our conversation. Now, let's look at our question, okay? Our detail question might ask, what must the student bring with him to the meeting with his professor. So just looking at my notes, according to my notes, he must bring with him his resume, his transcripts, and awards. Those three things, the resume, transcripts, and list of awards. Now, as we know, the TOEFL loves to trick us and try to trap us. So when we look at our answer choices, a, B, C, and D. There will be some distractors or traps. They look really good, but they're wrong. <laughs> and they're purposefully written that way to distract us from the correct answer choice. So let's take a look at some of the traps that you might see. One of them is the not mentioned trap. So this is a trap that's just not mentioned in the conversation at all. But it seems reasonable that, hmm, it might have been mentioned. Could it have been mentioned? I don't have it in my notes. <laughs> okay, so it sounds reasonable, but it just wasn't mentioned. So let's say, for example, one of our answer choices says, the student must bring with him a list of his volunteer experiences. Now, it sounds sort of reasonable that he might have to bring a list of his volunteer experiences because he's bringing along his resume, which might have those volunteer experiences in them, um, or in it, rather. But she doesn't say this. She Nowhere in the conversation does she mention that he should bring volunteer experiences with him to this meeting tomorrow, that he should bring a list of those things. So we have to eliminate this as a possible answer choice. It's just not mentioned. Nowhere in the conversation. Okay. Now let's move on to our next trap, which is the false statement trap. Now some students are going to say, Kirsten, I know it's false. It's wrong. I got it. Move on. Um, but the false statement is tricky, <laughs> okay? So it often uses 
words that we've heard in the conversation. But the statement may change the word order, change the placement of words, and therefore change the meaning of something. So it might be a complete 180 degree opposite of what the conversation says. And that's great. That's usually the obvious one that we cancel out right away. Okay, so let's say for example that um, one of our answer choices says, the student must bring his friend's notes with him. Now the friend's notes, that was mentioned, okay? It was mentioned in the conversation, but she doesn't say to bring these notes with him for their meeting tomorrow, right? So this would be a false statement. Now let's look at another example of a false statement. Let's say our answer choice says, he must bring questions he has for the professor. Now this is a little trickier because if I look at my notes, I do have that word questions, okay? But he's not the one that should bring questions. It's actually the professor that will be asking him questions at the meeting tomorrow. So he's not supposed to bring questions. She's going to ask him questions about his resume, his transcripts, etc. So that is the false statement trap. Don't fall into it, even though you might have heard the word mentioned. Um, trust your notes. Um, and don't fall into, you know, you have to read the answer choice very carefully. Because again, typically it uses words that we've heard, but changes it around in a slight way to change the meaning of what happened in the conversation. Okay, now let's move on to another trap that is very similar to the false statement trap. I like to call this one partly true, partly false. Okay, so maybe the first part of the, the answer choice is true, and the next part is, whoop, something's going wrong, something false is happening. So let's say that uh, one of our answer choices says, the student must bring with him award medals. He must bring his award medals. Now she does say to bring a list of any awards that he's won. But does she say to bring the actual medal, like a medal that you would wear around your neck? You know, after maybe you um, get this award, you know, you get this big medal. She doesn't indicate to bring a medal to the meeting, right? Just a list of awards. So. We would have to eliminate this. This is partly true. The award part is true. The medal part is false. Get rid of it. All right. Now the next trap is one that students fall into a lot and it's called, this answer choice doesn't answer the question. <laughs> so it could be a true statement, but it just doesn't answer the question. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say our answer choice says, the student must bring a letter of recommendation to his grad school. Now you'll think back at the conversation and say, well, yeah, he, he does have to send a letter of recommendation off to his grad school. His grad school is requiring this. So it's part of the application process. They need a letter of recommendation. But the question is, what must the student bring with him to the meeting with his professor? He's not bringing a letter of recommendation to the meeting with his professor, <laughs> okay? So again, it's a true statement. He must give a letter of recommendation to his grad school from somebody who's gonna recommend him, but he's not bringing that to the meeting with his professor, okay? Do you see how that works? true statement, but it doesn't answer the question. We want to know what he must bring with him to the meeting with the professor. Okay. The final trap, which many of you know already, too extreme. 
Okay, this is a statement that is too extreme um, and it severely limits or um, exaggerates something in the conversation. So let's say our answer choice um, says um, he must bring a list of all the jobs he's ever worked. All the jobs he's ever worked. Now, this might at first seem reasonable because he's bringing a resume and on a resume you list jobs. However, she doesn't say bring a list of all the jobs you've ever worked. And besides, a resume shouldn't contain all the jobs you've ever worked. It should only contain the jobs, work experience that is relevant to the position uh, that you are applying for, or in this case, relevant to the scholastic program that you're going to be applying for. So, no, she doesn't want a list of all his job experiences, of all the jobs he's ever had. This is too extreme and we have to eliminate it. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, again, when you look at the answer choices A, B, C, and D, inevitably one or more of these traps are gonna show up and it's your job to be able to see those traps and eliminate them so that you can select the correct answer choice in the quickest amount of time. Now, if you're interested in learning about a lot of different TOEFL traps and you're learning, you're wanting to really master um, the art of selecting the correct answer choice and, and not being distracted, I'd highly recommend uh, my reading course. It's open enrollment. It's right now sign up and you'll see that even if you're studying listening or you're studying reading, the same traps will show up. <laughs> so when you really learn um, how to spot the traps, how they work, you'll learn how to eliminate them faster and get to the right answer. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.